Cognitive deficits in Parkinson's disease can range from mild to severe. Although cognitive impairment can be present in the early stages of PD, it's typically mild and doesn't become severe until the late stages. Cognition can be grouped into several domains, four of which are commonly impacted in Parkinson's disease. Executive function, complex attention, perceptual motor function, plus learning and memory. If cognitive impairment affects more than one domain and interferes with the ability to perform daily activities of living, individuals are diagnosed as having Parkinson's disease dementia. However, when dementia occurs within one year of the onset of Parkinsonian motor symptoms, a diagnosis of dementia with Lewy bodies should be considered instead. PD with dementia and dementia with Lewy bodies looks the same pathologically. The only difference is the timing of when the dementia occurs during the disease course. Mild cognitive impairment is diagnosed when people with Parkinson's have deficits present on cognitive testing, but those deficits don't interfere with their ability to carry out activities of daily living. Depending on the methodology used to detect it, the prevalence of mild cognitive impairment in Parkinson's disease is estimated to be between 20 to 60 percent. It increases the risk of developing Parkinson's disease dementia, which has a prevalence of about 30 to 40 percent in the PD population. Cognitive impairment in PD can be quite heterogeneous in its rate of progression, but not all PD patients with mild cognitive impairment will go on to develop Parkinson's disease dementia. One of the earliest and most common cognitive deficits in Parkinson's is executive dysfunction. It manifests as difficulty with planning, organization, starting new tasks, switching tasks, or problem solving. Early executive dysfunction in PD is thought to be caused by dopamine loss. Individuals with PD may also have complex attention and perceptual motor deficits. Attention deficits may present as difficulty concentrating on a conversation or slower processing speed. Along with executive dysfunction, this may cause problems with dual tasking, such as having a conversation while walking. Perceptual motor problems may present as difficulty parking in a parking spot or difficulty staying in one's lane when driving. Memory deficits may be present in PD, but are generally mild compared to a condition such as Alzheimer's disease. In PD, memory recall improves with cues or choices. For example, if you ask an individual with PD to remember apple, table, and penny, they may not be able to say any of them a few minutes later. However, if you state that one of the words is a fruit, the individual with PD is more likely to remember apple. On the other hand, in Alzheimer's disease, cues and choices don't help. The Montreal Cognitive Assessment, or MOCA, is one of the recommended bedside global cognitive scales to screen for cognitive impairment in people with PD. When compared to another commonly used global scale, the Mini Mental Status Examination, or MMSE, the MOCA may be particularly sensitive to the mild cognitive changes seen in Parkinson's because it assesses executive function. The MOCA has 30 items and can be completed in approximately 10 minutes. Other recommended cognitive scales for use in Parkinson's include the Parkinson's Disease Cognitive Rating Scale, or PDCRS, the Scales for Outcomes in Parkinson's Disease Cognition, or SCOPA-COG, and the Mattis Dementia Rating Scale, or MDRS. While global cognitive scales are useful for screening, Neuropsychological testing remains the gold standard for assessing cognition in Parkinson's. When an individual with PD presents with cognitive concerns, a workup for other causes should be considered, including thyroid disease and vitamin B12 deficiency. If the cognitive changes are more acute, urinary tract or other infections should be ruled out. If possible, any centrally acting medications such as sleep medications, pain medications, overactive bladder agents, other anticholinergics, amantadine, dopamine agonists, or levodopa should be either discontinued 
or the dose lowered as much as possible. While early cognitive deficits in PD may be due to dopaminergic denervation, progression to dementia correlates with loss of cortical acetylcholine. As a result, we treat PD dementia with central acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme that acts on acetylcholine, breaking it down. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, or cholinesterase inhibitors, inhibit this enzyme, which results in more acetylcholine available in the brain. Examples of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors include denepazil and rivastigmine. Randomized controlled trials have shown that acetylcholinesterase inhibitors have a modest benefit in PD dementia. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are associated with side effects that are of particular importance to patients with PD. These include nausea, diarrhea, orthostatic hypotension, bradycardia, and increased tremor. When you start a patient on a cholinesterase inhibitor, you should start them on a low dose and gradually titrate the dose upward over several weeks until they reach their target dose. For full details on dosing, please refer to the course handbook. Mamantine is an NMDA receptor antagonist that's been used in patients with Alzheimer's disease. However, for PD dementia, trials of mamantine are mixed, so it's not used as often as the cholinesterase inhibitors. So far, no medication has been proven helpful to treat mild cognitive impairment in Parkinson's disease. Exercise and other options, such as cognitive training, have potential and are under investigation. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.